Hello and welcome to Quick Flick, your weekly dose of cricket. I am Rusbeg, and along with me, I have my co-host Ram. Ram, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a, it's a real pleasure. So today in the studios, we have got none other than our esteemed guest, Mr. Azhar Abbas. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. My pleasure. Um, Ram, you go way back with Mr. Abbas. So, what's your story? Well, Azhar Abbas is well known in the community. Uh, but my relationship with him was as a chairperson in the Eden Roski Cricket Club. And three years ago, we kind of retained him as the, the director of coaching. And it was a real blessing for the community and also the players in the team. So, welcome, uh, Azhar. It's really fantastic to have you with us. Thank you, Ram. Yes. And uh, talking about his achievements, Azhar has been awarded the Coach of the Year. He's been the winning coach of the Tom Hellaby Cup this year and also the Richard Jones uh, yes, Cup as day. well. And in 2015, the Plunkett Shield uh, National yes. Your weekly dose of cricket. I am Rusbeg, and along with me, I have my co-host Ram. Ram, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a, it's a real pleasure. So today in the studios, we have got none other than our esteemed guest, Mr. Azhar Abbas. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. My pleasure. Um, Ram, you go way back with Mr. Abbas. So what's your story? Well, Azhar Abbas is well known in the community. Uh, but my relationship with him was as a chairperson in the Eden Roski Cricket Club. And three years ago, we kind of retained him as the, the director of coaching. And it was a real blessing for the community and also the players in the team. So welcome, uh, Azhar. It's really fantastic to have you with us. Thank you, Ram. Yes. And uh, talking about his achievements, Azhar has been awarded the Coach of the Year. He's been the winning coach of the Tom Hellaby Cup this year and also the Richard Jones uh, Cup, yes, Cup as well. Day. And in 2015, the Plunkett Shield uh, National yes. Championship yes. and also a T20. T20 National Championship. So Joji Pai. Yeah. Joji Pai yes. National Championship. So that's a that's solid record of coaching. So, and you were also part of uh, the the cricketing, the coaching team of uh, Delhi Daredevils. Yeah, long time IPL. ago. Yes, long time. Wow. Yeah. So it's very interesting. We're going to have a lot of chat with you. Uh, we want to know about what goes behind coaching. Um, we're going to talk about your achievements, your accomplishments, uh, but also uh, for our viewers to understand what's involved if they want to pursue cricket as a career. Yes, yeah? of course. So you've been a coach for how long in, in New Zealand? Uh, this will be my 16th season. 16th season? Yes. Wow. And you've also coached the Auckland... Uh, as well in yes, the past. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's really fantastic. And as a cricket player, you are more of a bowler, is that right? Yes, bo fast bowling is my background. Uh -huh. But when you do level three or um, further, you expand as a coach. Coach mm -hmm. uh, coming here uh, towards you, uh, you you can cover batting, bowling, fielding. Well. You know all aspects. All but aspects of the game. Being myself, I was more like opening bowler. So, Azar, uh, tell me where did you uh, start your career in cricket? Um, obviously, I'm from Multan, mm -hmm. which is central part of uh, Pakistan, mm -hmm. and very passionate people uh, play. A lot of people like Bakar Yunus and um, Inzamam ul Haq, Mushtaq Ahmed, mm -hmm. they all came from that part of uh, oh. the country. Mm -hmm. So I started career professionally 1997, 98, when I went to UK mm -hmm. first time. But before that, I started playing like anybody else. Does you know school cricket, club cricket, mm -hmm. uh, gully cricket? <laughs> uh, not really gully cricket, but we have a little ground we used to play there. Okay. But then once I turned 14, 15, so my parents sent me to Lahore to study and uh, play cricket, where my elder brother was already established, mm -hmm. Sir Faraz Ahmed. So he took over from there. He helped me to um, find the right club, right coaching. So I spent four or five years and done a lot of training at that time. A uh, club called Model Town Cricket Club. Mm -hmm. um, very old club, very established club. Uh, currently, Azhar Ali is part of that club from right. Okay. So from there, so I, when I was 19, I started playing first class cricket. Right. Oh. 94, 95, when I started 
playing for Pakistan railways team. Right. So that's from there, just things pick it up and then just kept playing. So you must be knowing a lot of uh, Pakistani players as yes, well. Yes, of course, when you play first class cricket yeah. back home, you come across all these players in the past, uh, past players. Uh, we have this uh, massive number of talented players over there and a lot of rapid changes are happening as well. Mm -hmm. So yes, I come across a lot of players. And you mentioned about your, uh, you playing in UK, what, what is that story about? So what happened was, at that time in mid-90s, the Yorkshire cricket clubs, based in more like Bradford, Leeds, they were very tend to pick uh, Pakistani fast bowlers. Mm -hmm. So back then they were getting, a lot of Pakistani bowlers were going over there and playing six month English summer season, which I played till 2004. So wow. I played uh, nine years, and from wow. there I came to Wellington, where I played for Crory Cricket Club. Oh wow! And uh, started my career at Wellington with Crory, and halfway of the season, I got a call from Wellington Firebirds coach. Back oh, yes. then it was uh, John uh, VJ, mm -hmm. Vaughn Johnson. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he he took me to his uh, first class team called Wellington Firebirds. So I played one year for them. And we ended up playing a state championship final against Auckland. That's where I came to Auckland. And I played against Auckland, Auckland Aces at Eden Park. Wow. And that, by the end of that game, so I got hold with Eden Roskill Cricket Club. Right. Back in those days, Mark Dittmer was the chairman. And he asked me to come and be part of our player coach in 2004. So that's where I started. 2004, you started your coaching career with Eden Roscoe. Oh, yes! Wow, that's amazing! And then you eventually become a, a like, New Zealand accredited coach as well. Yes. So, so what happened is, and even 2004, my domination was still as a player. I was dominating with the ball, bat, you know. But as you get older and you get wiser and you try to understand the game more, bit more, you try to figure out that I can help other people around me. Right. So it never started as a professional coach. It always started like a senior player who's helping his uh, youngsters around him. So right. that's what I tried. So eventually I start finding that people were getting benefit and I felt like this is something I can do more. Wow. So from there I thought, why can't I choose this as a profession? As a career. As what a career. Mean? It wow. never started like a pure professional coach. It was always a player yeah. who wants to help Just his giving teammates. back to the community. Yes, te wow. teammates. And then I realized that people, people were listening the way of um, my approach is very simple. I try to make simple approach and try to read the individual's uh, personality, how it works for him. I don't go with always my way. I will try to understand the personality of the player I'm working, try to read his mind, how it works. Some people, you know, just try to make things very difficult for themselves. Yeah. So I try to make it simple for them. So right. I, I take them towards more simplicity and what works for them instead of... Uh, being like somebody else right don't right. do not try to copy someone it might not work for you yeah so, so just slowly slowly, slowly so slowly. apart from apart from uh, eden roskill club who else did you coach which other teams from did you coach? eden roskill i got western districts cricket association which is like west of auckland mm -hmm. so i become mm -hmm. one of their elite coach and we won few championships as well then i become a coach for uh, it's called DFA. It's a program at uh, Auckland Cricket, mm -hmm. developing future aces. Okay. So I was part of that program for three years. Wow. And from there, they get, hired me for bowling coach for Auckland Aces, which is like a state team professional. That's amazing. So I become their bowling coach in 2015, 2016. So two years. So in those two years, we won. Blanket Shield, which is national four-day championship, and we won T20, which is back then they used to call Georgie by Super Georgie Smash. Pie. Right. Okay. Wow, that's so, amazing. So who who are the bowlers uh, in your team at that time? At that time, we had um, Lockie Ferguson. Oh. Wow. Oh. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, Colin D. Grandholm. Yeah. Yes. Colin Munro. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yes. Michael Bates. So these guys were strong team. Yes. Yes. Very that's, strong team. That's pretty good. So now you spoke about bowling coach. I always had this question. Uh, so there's a bowling coach, there's a batting coach, there's also a head coach. Yes. What's the responsibility? What's the role of a head coach? Like so, head coach is a is is a person who looks after everything underneath him. So what a major associations that does like a county team or a say 
uh, international team hiring a, a head coach. So head coach is not only looking after the batsmen, but he's also looking after what his bowlers going through, what the keepers are doing, what the spin bowling, bowling going on, what the uh, fielding department is being looked after. So he is the head of all those things. Underneath, he got three, four components working, like a bowling coach, batting coach, spin bowling coach, right. fielding coach. So this guy, who is the head coach, he is responsible of all these uh, people under him. Right. So the people under him are reporting him mm -hmm. what they are done and what they're going to do and how they're going to fix this. So uh, this year you were the uh, you are the coach of the year, yes. right? So and you won the your team won the Tom Halabi Cup. Yes. So what has been the secret ingredient this time around? No secret. It was a uh, hard work of uh, since you mentioned last three years. Eden Roskell took, took some really positive steps going forward and uh, they decided, you know, we have to be a real force in Auckland cricket. Mm -hmm. So they gave me more responsibilities um, and we tried to work harder. And every year we came very close to winning. But this year we finally crossed the line and uh, we had a lot of youngsters coming up in the future and they really sh shine this time. And they performed some critical games. They, they stood up and won the game for us. Mm. But it was not like a, a by chance or a, and it was a proper hard, hard work, work three four years yeah. that Absolutely. paid off this year. And I also hear from my uh, colleagues in Daniel Rossi's club that we have few players who are also in the under seventeen or nineteen. Uh, uh, New Zealand, yes. in New Zealand oh, as well. Wow. Yes, That's so we have uh, three players who are part of a New Zealand, say, winter development squad. Because next year there's under-19 World Cup going, going to happen in West Indies. Right. So they have about 20 players around the country. They get together uh, every school holidays after every term. And three of them are from Eden Rosso. Wow. wow. A, that is amazing. That's an achievement. an incredible achievement, Azur. And uh, so who do you rate as uh, a top bowler today in the world? I, really, that's that's a very tough think, question, but yeah. Uh, I, I rate uh, this guy, uh, Australian fast bowler, uh, Pat Cummings. Pat Cummings, Pat Cummings, yeah. And the reason is uh, the amount of uh, energy he brings on the field. He is the guy who is uh, absolutely super fit, and he runs in from ball one to the 20th over. He will never drop his speed. He will keep coming hard at you. He will never give you a breathing space. He will get you out. Uh, and until you face him, he is on your face all the time. He's not backing off mm. like other bowlers get tired or second spell, third spell. So I rate him highly uh, skillful. He gone through a lot of injuries in past, but since he came back, he is very strong and very admirable fast bowler in Test cricket. So Azar, uh, talking about fast bowling again, since you're kind of a, a, a super coach on that area. Uh, we always know that uh, Pakistan cricket is uh, synonymous with fast bowling and the other way around. So, uh, what is the kind of a history behind uh, fast bowling in Pakistan? Why Pakistan produces so many fast bowlers? I think uh, it's a, you have to understand the whole the history of Pakistan cricket. Mm -hmm. Right in the beginning, when they got a status of a test uh, arena, 1954, they had a first tour to England and they lost badly very first game. And they got a lot of criticism from Eng English press as usual. But very next test match, it was in Oval, second test match this nation was playing and they beat England in England. Wow. And this is the only team in the history of uh, world cricket who won their test status and then they beat uh, a position which was very strong back then. And the guy was Sir Fazal Mahmood. Fazal Mahmood was amazingly accurate and very, very hard-working pace bowler. Okay. So right in the beginning, we got someone very special fast bowler. And then there was a guy named Khan Muhammad mm -hmm. in the mid-50s mid and early 60s. He was exceptionally good bowler. And from there, Sarfraz Nawaz and Imran Khan. And Imran Khan really changed the whole aspect of pace bowling for our country because he was very young when he went to England and he was part of... Um, Oxford University cricket team in the beginning yeah. and he brought a lot of positive things in back to Pakistan cricket. What he, he brought best thing was the right food to eat. Mm. He used to come in Australia and he was discouraging people to eat any meat or anything because that takes a lot of water off your body. So you have to eat those mellow and easy digestible food so mm -hmm. you are not dehydrated and cramping. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was 
hitting the gym very hard. He was so passionate about that fitness level to need to be really next level mm -hmm. if you are fast bowler. So under his wings, he developed Vasim Akram and Vakar Yunus and Akib Javed, and then from there onwards, Shoei Bakhtar and you know just you can name it. Yeah. But the real master behind whole change is Imran Khan. Right. But right. there are traditions before even him exist of a strong Pakistani bowling, pace bowling culture. Yeah, also because uh, Imran Khan was the captain. So, you know, when you're a captain, you will always push your wing yeah. as well. Yes. So, uh, wow, that's a great piece of history for us. Um, talking about uh, fast bowling, and you already mentioned about injuries. How do you... Um, how do you tackle injuries? Because fast bowlers are usually prone to injuries and... The thing is, uh, fast bowling is very unnatural and very, very strong physical job. People don't realize how hard it is running from 25 meter, having a strong jump in the crease. Crease itself is like a concrete and you are consistently landing on that. You have a spikes on and each spikes under... There are 11 nails are under your feet and you repeatedly doing this and your body is not made for these things. Mm -hmm. So you're doing something which is very unnatural. Right. To, to deal that and to be successful, you have to be working so hard to develop your muscles and uh, make sure your muscles are not only strong, they are flexible at the same time. And then mold your bo bowling action that which suits your body as well. So if your body, say you are a strong shoulder guy, your action need to be more like a shoulder bowler. If your legs are very strong, and you are physically very strong lower after below your waist, you need to be more side on and get more power from your legs. So you need to read your body, what is your body and what, how you can get best out of your body. Now this Ruzbe, this is like a gold information, yeah. you know, this you don't normally hear from people. Absolutely. This yeah. is like a kind of an insider's view of how a coach thinks about bowling. So thank you for sharing us. That's really wonderful. You're welcome. So the height of a bowler, how, yeah. how important is that? It has some uh, importance. When you have a more height, you tend to get more bounce. That right. is the most uh, important thing you can say. Yeah. But people proved that it is not the only one skill if you have a height and you, you become a fast bowler. Right. There are people who bowl really fast and very accurate and very successful, such as uh, Malcolm Marshall, Marshall, such as like um, uh, you can say recent times, I guess, Loki Ferguson is bowling mm -hmm. very quick. He's not very tall. Right. And um, uh, another guy, I would say, there was a West Indian bowler. Um, he was normal height. Mm -hmm. I think Kima Roach. Mm -hmm. okay. And Dale Steen is not very tall. Right. He, he proved also. everyone that. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of bowlers. But again, it comes back to your basic bowling action, your physical strength, and how you work hard to make your bowling muscles strong. Because what happens when you bowl, each test match, when you finish, you basically use those muscles, mm. burn those muscles to have the, that test match where you bowl 40 overs. Those muscles are now very weak, very lethargic of, at, at the end of the test match. You have to go back, you have to develop them, then you make them strong again. And then the best bowlers, what they do is they try to sustain those developed muscles so they're not feeling very lethargic and weak at the end of the game. So in that regard, Australia is leading to whole world. So the nutrition they have, the best one, the mm -hmm. gym, the, the facilities they have, it's world class. So that's why their bowlers are more sustainable. Their careers are longer than others, than uh, other, other countries are playing. So, so it's a hard job. It's a physical job. But it requires a hell of a hard work to sustain. So we talked about uh, fast bowling quite a bit. Now you also had uh, you also do coaching for the spinners as well. So how does it change when it comes to spinners? The spin bowling had a different, uh, very different approach to pace bowling. So if you are say, a spin bowler, the first thing you need to be focused is you spinning the ball. So uh -huh. say you are a spin bowler, you yeah. should spin the ball. If you are a leg spin, you should turn the ball. Mm -hmm. So in yeah. spin, generally there are two type of bowlers. One are Finger spin bowlers, hmm. which is like off spinners or left arm spinners, yeah. and the wrist spinners, which generally are leg spinners. Yeah. So wrist spinners, because they get extra over the ball, which because of their wrist use, mm -hmm. they tend to get more turn than off spinners. So that's why the leg spinners are so important in your test matches, especially in the fourth inning when you come, there are some the cracks, patches, on the bench, cracks yeah. and the leg spinners turn the ball too much. 
and uh, it becomes very difficult for a batsman to deal. But at the same time, the off-spinners also proved the importance they have in the game. Um, but again, once you turn the ball, the next thing you have control the ball. So you make sure you are very accurate on landing the ball. And once you have a turn and control, now you become how to read the batsman. Because batsmen won't just stay in the crease to deal you. They will use their feet. They will come at you. They will make a room. They will go cross. So as smart bowler, you have to make sure, look at the batsman till very last time when you release the ball. Don't just release the ball. He right. will make it low full toss. So if you read the batsman is moving, then you have to pull the length back right. or take the pace off. Mm. So he can miss time. Wow, that's wow, point. that's really crucial tips. Now, uh, for our viewers who are watching, young viewers uh, and who aspire to be cricketers, what would be your tip for them? When should they start? I think they should start uh, when they are like say nine, ten years old. Okay. But they should start with the softer ball early on, mm -hmm. like an incredible ball or tennis ball, because their body, their muscles are so uh, weak. So if they go straight into hard ball, they will struggle because it's heavy, it's quite uh, physical. Yeah. So once they're bowling softer ball, then they modify their action easily and their arm speed can be faster. So once they turn to 13, 12, 13, 14, that's where they should go into hard ball career. But yes, when mm -hmm. any opportunity when they get to play, to roll their arms, to hit few balls, 9, 8, 10 years old will be useful. That's pretty amazing. So, uh, when you give tips to young players about their body and the diet and the muscles, and are they surprised to hear such things? Yes, sometimes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the parents uh, are more more knowledgeable and more um, wanting for mm -hmm. the kids. Hmm. But because kids don't have that uh, vision, yeah. Uh, so they just want to go with the, those uh, you know tasty food. Mm. But parents always ask, like, what can we do to get rid of some of his weight or he's not eating enough or advise him mm -hmm. to eat more. So I do all, the, all those things, but it's getting better. So I, I can see the trend last five years is changed. A lot of people were using a lot of um, uh, unhealthy food, say, four or five years ago. But now, slowly, I can feel that they are going more towards healthy food. All right. That's amazing. So one question, and this is uh, something about you. Um, so you have played cricket for a very long time. Now you're coaching. Are you still maintaining your diet or now you cheat? <laughs> no, I, what happened is when you play for a long period of time, you get used to with certain kind of food and then you normally stuck to it. Right. If you try to change too much, then it's, uh, obviously you go back to your old habit which you were running for the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. So I think I did not change much. but. With the age, we get slow, our body moves slow, mm. our activities are lesser, and that makes you a bit um, physically tired. When you're young, your moving, movement is very fast, so then you can uh, digest whatever you eat, but just need to be a bit more watchful what you eat. So I, I do care a little bit. So that's the secret of your health. <laughs> One of the main secrets. <laughs> yeah. so I think this, is, this has been amazing yeah. uh, so far, Azhar. Uh, thank you for, for, for being with us and sharing your wisdom and insights and uh, also sharing your experience in this much wanted kind of uh, area of uh, cricket, which is coaching as well. So thank you so much for spending time with us and sharing your insights with all our viewers. I'm sure they're going to learn a lot uh, out of this whole conversation that we had. Uh, but alongside Ram, we just uh, received news right now that IPL has been suspended yes. um, without any further notice. Uh, until when? Um, Mr. Abbas, what's your view on uh, what was happening around IPL? and? I think it was, uh, it makes sense, like uh, common sense prevail here. Um, whatever situation, the whole uh, subcontinent, particularly India at the moment is going through, it's very painful. I this channel, I जितने भी लोग हैं खास तौर पर जो मुसलमान हैं उनके रमजान का महीना चल रहा है तो वो अब आखिरी उसके 6 7 दिन रह गए हैं मैं सिर्फ ये चाहता हूं कि इस महीने में अगर ये लोग जो इफ्तारी का टाइम होता है उस वक्त अल्लाह की रहमत इनके ऊपर बहुत करीब होती है उसकी वजह सिर्फ ये है कि कोई भी इंसान जब सारा दिन भूखा प्यासा रहता है सिर्फ अपने अल्लाह को खुश करने के लिए तो जब शाम को वो खोलने के लिए बैठता है वो कुछ दुआएं मांगता है और दुआ सबसे पावरफुल टूल है हमारी हुकूमतें हमारे लोग सब अपनी तौर पे एफर्ट कर रहे हैं वहां पे 
لیکن اگر ہم سب دعا کریں اور اس دعا میں ان لوگوں کے لیے خیریت مانگے اللہ سے صحت مانگے اور ہماری کوشش یہ ہونی چاہیے کہ جب اسپیسیفکلی ہم روزہ کھولنے سے جو چار پانچ سیکنڈ پہلے ہوتے ہیں اس وقت ہم کہیں کہ یا اللہ ہمیں اس موزی مرض سے نجات دے کیونکہ تو ہی بتا سکتا ہے کہ اس میں سے نکلنے کا راستہ کیا ہے ہم سب بڑے کمزور ہیں ہم اپنے طور پہ کوشش کر رہے ہیں لیکن ہم سب کی جب دعائیں ملیں گی تو انشاءاللہ مجھے لگتا ہے کوئی نہ کوئی راستہ وہاں سے پیدا ہوگا جہاں سے یہ خیریت آئے گی ساری قوم کے لیے شکریہ تھینک یو سو مچ یہ بہت میننگ فل ہے ہمارے لیے بیکاز وی آل نو آر فیملیز آر اسٹک دیر اینڈ اٹس اے ویری ایموشنل ٹائم فار اے لاٹ آف آس اوویئر ایز ویل سو تھینک یو سو مچ اور میں میں روزہ نہیں رکھتا ہوں لیکن میں پھر بھی آئی پرے ایوری ڈے اینڈ آئی ڈو پرے بیکاز آئی ڈو بلیو آپ نے جیسے کہا کہ دعا ہو جو پاور ہوتا ہے دعا میں دعا کی پاور کا انفارچونیٹلی مسلمان کو بھی نہیں پتا اگر وہ اس کو پتہ چل جائے کہ جب آپ سارا دن روزہ رکھتے ہو گھنٹوں چودہ گھنٹے آپ بھوکے پیسے رہتے ہو اینڈ پہ اللہ کی رحمت آپ کے آپ کے لیے کھڑی ہوتی ہے وہاں پہ لیکن کیونکہ ہم اس کو دعا نہیں کرتے ہو جا کے روزہ کھول لیتے ہیں تو وہ ہماری مرضی ہے اگر ہم اس کو دعائیں اس میں شامل کر لیں تو اللہ پاک تو یہ چاہتا ہی ہے کہ میرے بندے جو ہیں جن کو میں نے زمین پہ پیدا کیا ہے وہ میرے سے جب دعا مانگیں گے تو میں ان کے لیے اسباب پیدا کروں گا اب ہمیں وہاں پہ کیا ہو رہا ہے کہ ہم سب انسانی کوششیں کر رہے ہیں لیکن ہم یہ نہیں سوچ رہے کہ ایک ال المائٹی پاور فل ایک ہے جو پوری کائنات کو سنبھالتا ہے تو کئی دفعہ انسان کی زندگی میں ایسے لمحے آ جاتے ہیں کہ وہ پوری کوشش کرنے کے باوجود بھی راستہ نہیں پا رہا ہوتا تو اس وقت تو کم از کم اس کو اپنے رب سے رجوع کرنا چاہیے تو یہ جو کروڑوں لوگ روزے رکھتے ہیں اور اللہ کے پاس بیٹھتے ہیں اور پھر دعائیں مانگتے ہیں اگر وہ اس دعا میں ہندوستان کے لوگوں کو شامل کر لیں اور ان کے لیے اللہ سے دعا مانگے کہ یا اللہ ان کو صحت دے اور یہ بیماری جلدی سے جلدی ختم کر تو مجھے بڑی امید ہے انشاءاللہ راستہ نکلے گا Yeah, thank you so so much for the wonderful message. Thank you. And, and the prayers. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Cricket definitely has always been a tool to bind people, bind nations. And uh, we hope that it's the same And uh, we hope that everything is going to get back to normal very soon. Very soon. On that note, thank you so much for watching Crick Flick, your weekly dose of cricket. We'll be back with a lot of updates on cricket. Um, IPL is not happening, but that doesn't stop us because there's so much things about cricket that we can talk about. So stay tuned to Apna TV channel number 36. Also, do remember to write us in because uh, your feedback is valuable. So go into our social media handles uh, that you can see on your screen right now and uh, give us comments, put comments, your feedback, your thoughts and get in touch with us. If there's any particular topic that you want us to cover, let us know. You're watching Crick Flick. Thank you so much. Thank you.